Hi, welcome to this supervised machine learning tutorial on how to do a classification tree in Python. Click the link in the video description to follow along in DataCamp workspace. First of all, you might wonder, when should I use a classification tree? And the answer is that you want the response variables, the thing you're trying to predict, to be logical values, so trues and falses, or categorical variables. Now, classification trees have pretty weak predictive power in general, so more on that in a moment, but it means they have fairly niche use cases. So the first case is that you need easy interpretability of the results. So for example, if you're working in a heavily regulated environment like finance or healthcare, you might have to explain your model uh, to a regulator. And so uh, classification trees are great because very easy to interpret what's going on. Secondly, they're really computationally cheap to run. So if you've got a very large data set and you're trying to train your model on something low powered like a laptop, then classification trees are pretty ideal. They also have a very niche but kind of cutting edge use case that rather than try to make predictions with the uh, classification tree, use them as a feature engineering step. So you can use the classification tree to convert continuous features into categorical features. Uh, so this is feature engineering and you then feed the results into something more computationally intensive but with better predictive power like a deep learning model. And as I mentioned, because these classification trees have weak predictive power, you actually, rather than just creating one of them, uh, you can create an ensemble of classification trees. So that just means lots of trees. And there are two broad classes of technique for doing this. You have bagging methods, which basically means you create lots and lots of different trees and then average them somehow or get them voting on like which parts of the tree are best. So this is what, how random forests work. There are also boosting methods where you do one tree at a time. So you start off with uh, one classification tree and then you sort of iteratively improving the tree so it gets better and better and better. And that's how something like gradient boosting works. However, both those things are out of scope for this tutorial. We're going to focus on single trees today. In terms of Python packages, we're going to be using scikit-learn today. You can also use PyCaret if you prefer. Let's move on to a case study. So we're going to be looking at determining the variety of raisin, and this is an automated food detection problem. So uh, automated food detection means you have images of food and you have to try and work out what food is in that image. So this is really useful for things like uh, automated production lines in, in food production, uh, things like food safety, trying to work out what allergens are present in food, things like dietary monitoring. So apps where you take a photo of your lunch and it tells you how many calories you've eaten. And this process traditionally has two steps. So the first step is you take your image data and you convert it into numeric features. So things like dimension, shape and color of your food. And then second step is to run a classification model on those features. So uh, we're going to be doing step two today. So I've got um, a raisin data set from the UCI machine learning archive and uh, it contains the output of step one. So it's got numeric features and we're going to be doing the uh, classification part. And we're looking at Turkish raisins today. So we're going to be using pandas for importing the data, scikit-learn for modeling and matplotlib for uh, a little bit of work on the plot. So let's write some code. So we start off importing uh, pandas as a PD, and then from scikit-learn, so from sklearn, we're going to import several functions. So I'm going to do this three times, uh, copy and paste, paste. So from the model selection uh, submodule, we are going to import train test split. From the tree submodule, we're going to import, uh, so if I start decision, uh, so, uh, in terms of um, uh, classification trees, there are actually it's it's a type of decision tree. And there are two types of decision trees. You've got classification uh, trees, classification decision trees, when uh, the response is logical or categorical, and then you've got regression trees or um, regression decision trees, which are used when the response is numeric. So in this case, we're going to be focusing on the classification trees, which are called decision tree classifier and scikit learn. Uh, all right, and then finally, uh, we're looking in the metrics submodule, and we'll take a look at uh, the accuracy score and uh, the uh, confusion matrix. Um, oh, so one other thing in order to uh, plot the results, we also want a function called uh, plot tree, and that is in the, uh, the tree submodule of scikit-learn. And finally, 
uh, we're going to do import uh, matplotlib uh, dot pyplot uh, as plt. Uh, got too many b's in pyplot. Okay, so let's run this. And um, we have everything we want now. So we're ready to import the data set. Uh, so we're going to do uh, pd.read underscore csv. And the file is called raisins.csv. So uh, raisins.csv. And let's just assign this to a variable called uh, raisins. I'm going to, oops, I'm going to copy and paste the name of this. So you can see the output. And here you can see we've got 900 rows. So each row represents one raisin, or at least one image of a raisin, with uh, the feature that, that we're taking out of that. And I have to say, at first, I got a little bit confused about what some of these columns meant. So major axis length, minor axis length, what's that? eccentricity, what does that mean? Um, so if we have a look at the data dictionary, it turns out this all makes sense if you think of a raisin as being an ellipse. So the major axis length, that's the, the longest part across uh, the ellipse. Minor axis length, shortest part along the ellipse. And eccentricity is how close to circular is it? So an eccentricity of one means it's perfectly circular. Eccentricity of zero means like completely flat, it's just a line. And then if we have a look on the right hand side of the data set, they've got variety and you've got choices of Kessiman uh, raisin and Besney raisin. And the other features are just other kind of properties of this ellipse. So first data manipulation task, we need to split the data set into um, a response column and explanatory columns. So the response column is the one called variety. So let's call this variable uh, response. In there. So uh, we're going to start with raisins and we're going to get the variety column. And then the uh, explanatory variables, uh, that's going to be, we're going to start with raisins again and we want every column except variety. So we're going to do drop uh, columns equals variety. So this is going to be um, a, a series because it's just one column of um, a data frame and explanatory is going to be another data frame, just one less column than raisins. Next step is to split the data into training and testing sets. We're going to be doing uh, training the model on the training data and uh, fitting uh, making predictions on the testing data. So uh, let's call train test split and we're going to pass in uh, the explanatory um, variables and the response variable. And train test split returns four different things. So um, it's going to return explanatory train, uh, explanatory test, response uh, train and response test. Let's run that and we'll see how we uh, split this uh, up. So next step, we're going to fit the model to the training set. And this takes two steps. So the first thing is we need to create a decision tree classifier object. This is going to be our model object. I'm just going to call it MDL short for model. And so uh, this is going to be decision tree classifier. And just to make things easier, when we come to look at the output, I'm going to set um, one of the parameters to uh, called max depth to three. So that's if we're going to have three different uh, layers of depth within our tree. Um, this will become clearer when we take a look at the output. And something you don't need to do in general, it just makes it easier to see what's going on. Now we're ready to fit the model to the uh, training sets. We use MDL and then the dot fit method. Uh, so we're going to fit this to uh, explanatory train and response uh, train. The output from this isn't very exciting, it just tells you what kind of model you used. What is more exciting is doing predictions though. So uh, now we're going to fit the, uh, so we're going to, sorry, we're going to make predictions on the testing set using models. We're going to do model.predict and uh, we're get, this time we're going to pass in a 
explanatory uh, test. Let's run this. You see, the result uh, is a NumPy array, and for each raisin in the uh, testing set, it's giving you its best prediction of whether it's a Kesemin raisin or a Besney raisin. So, all very exciting. However, um, it's not that useful on its own. We don't know whether those are right or wrong, so we're going to have to do some uh, model evaluation. So let's save this uh, to a variable. I'm going to call it uh, predicted uh, responses. Uh, let's just run that. And so we're going to assess the model performance. Now, there are four possible outcomes, either um, it was a Besney raisin and we correctly did that, so that's, that's a good outcome. Or it was um, a Kesselman raisin and we also correctly predicted that, so that's a good outcome. And then there are two possibilities where we did wrong, where it was actually Kesselman but we predicted Besney, or it was actually Besney but we predicted Kesselman. And we can see how many times each of these things occurred with confusion matrix. And in this case, we pass in the actual and predicted responses. So the actual responses, uh, that is called uh, response test, and the predicted responses are just called predicted responses. So here we've got a two by two matrix, same form as this. So in this case, you can see 94 times it was actually Besney, we predicted Besney 95 times. It was actually Kessman, we predicted Kessman, so we, those are pretty good. And then there were 12 and 24 cases where we got it wrong. Whether that's um, good enough accuracy, unclear. And actually, just from looking at this two by two matrix, it's really difficult to get a sense of like quite how good uh, things are. Also, a better sort of way of um, figuring this out is we can use accuracy score, which is a pretty common metric about the performance of a model. So I'll show you the code and then I'll explain what this means. Uh, so let's do accuracy score and this takes the same arguments as confusion matrix. So I'm going to copy and paste this. So we want the actual responses and predicted responses. So let's run this <clears throat> score of 0.84. So in this case, uh, what that does is the sum of the diagonals, so the sum of the correct responses, 94 and 95, divided by the sum of all the cases. So this is how many rows there are on the testing set, so 94 plus 24 plus 12 plus 95. So uh, you can see uh, it guessed right uh, 0.84 or 84% of the time. So that seems reasonable to me, but I don't have a strong sense of like whether that's good enough. All right, so let's visualize the tree and you can see how the decisions are made. So we're going to call plot tree and this takes a few arguments. So uh, first of all, um, it takes the model and then we want to set the uh, feature names argument. And this is going to be the names of the columns in the explanatory data set, which is uh, uh, explanatory dot columns takes an argument called class names, uh, which is basically the, the names of the different values in the response, so Besney and uh, Kesselman. Um, we could type this manually, but it's sort of better to do this uh, programmatically. Uh, so we can say um, it's the unique responses, uh, so, so response.unique, uh, so the unique values and responses, that's, uh, that's Besney and Kesselman. We're going to use sorted to make sure that they are in alphabetical order. Uh, finally, the plot is a little bit easier to interpret if you use an argument called filled. Uh, make that true. Um, I will explain what that means when you see the plot. Let's have a look at this. Now, this actually dumps a load of annoying output there. <clears throat> However, you can see we have um, a plot and it looks like a tree upside down. Uh, so this is the root, and then uh, these are branches, and then you have leaves at the end. Let's just go back and tweak our code a bit to make sure the output is a bit more readable, and then I'll go through explaining this in a little bit more detail. So first thing, we're going to do some uh, bit of uh, matplotlib coding. So we're going to use plot.figure, and let's make this a little bit 
uh, bigger using fig size. So we're gonna make it uh, 10 inches by 15 inches. And then if we do plot.show at the end, it's not gonna dump all this text output. Uh, one of the thing, uh, let's change the font size to 11. Turn it up to 11, all right. Boom, that's a little bit more readable. Okay, so what happens is you start off with um, a row in your data set and then you check the major axis length and if the value is less than 422.423, you go left. If not, you go right. Spoiler, a classification tree is basically just a flowchart. And then you, uh, if you went left, you would check the perimeter, see if the value is uh, less than 1125. If you went right, you check the major axis length that says it's less than 466. And you just work through each of these decisions, and it's the name decision tree, until you get to the end. And you're going to end up in one of these boxes. Uh, and it will tell you, uh, is this uh, a Besney raisin? Those are the red ones. Or is it a Kesman raisin? Those are the blue ones. Um, so in this case, the color is the strength of belief about uh, how right it thinks these uh, decisions are. So in this case, dark blue, um, it's, um, it's pretty confident that these are all Kesman. This one is uh, very pale red, so it thinks they're Besney, but it's really not sure about it. Anyway, that's how the model works underneath. When you're explaining to your regulators how your model works, you can go through this. Okay, so we've classified some raisins. If you want to learn more, classification trees are covered um, in this uh, scikit-learn tutorial, which goes through uh, understanding the decision tree structure, so what this plot looks like in a lot more detail. Um, classification trees are covered in so many places in DataCamp, many different courses cover it. I would start with the machine learning, the tree-based models in Python course, and then there are also some industry-specific um, machine learning courses like machine learning for finance in Python, machine learning for marketing in Python. Those also cover um, different types of decision trees, including classification trees. And then there is a decision tree classification workspace template if you want to apply your skills. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, please do subscribe. Please check out future tutorials. This has been wonderful, thank you.